I wanted to be married, mm -hmm. but I didn't know if I wanted the marriage. My behavior wasn't consistent in being a husband because you see, it, the decision is not to be married. The decision mm. is to be a husband. Yeah. I can be a nuisance in a relationship. I mean, I was at the problem. See, the was well, mm. in certain regards. <laughs> <laughs> Check me four months time. Mm -hmm. People and daughter don't warm me up. <laughs> <laughs> There's a difference between deciding to be a man, deciding to be a husband, mm -hmm. and deciding to be a father. I have no financial background as a financial advisor. Actually, it's just healthcare. <laughs> I was once engaged. That is very important. Wow. Just how you know it impacts the mental, yeah, yeah. and how as men, oftentimes we don't think it is important because you know we just let go and then touch and go. No, me no want nobody. Just I say that. Mercy. Really, I'm not interested in nobody. Please this claim out there, ladies. Sorry. <laughs> This is a place where we come to stay, where lives are being changed and impacted each and every day. If you have been here on a Wealthy Royalty podcast, tested and tried, you would have heard my two guests that I had on the previous episodes, Hanif Gray and Shaveen Modi. Their stories were so touching. I've been receiving many opinions. I've been receiving many persons telling me that they have been touched by these stories. If you have not yet seen them, I implore you to head over to these videos. Leave your comment, like, share, and subscribe. Now today I have another guest of mine and he's gonna be talking to you about mental health, relationships, and if it is that gentlemen, <laughs> women, you're having financial problems, don't worry because he's the best person for you today. My well, guess. Granville. Respect, bro. Bless you, my family. <laughs> you know, thank you for taking the time out for there. Oh, naturally, naturally. You understand? You know, it, it has been very fruitful so far for this channel. And I've chosen all my guests very uniquely and specifically because of the experiences you've had mm -hmm. and the wealth of knowledge that you also acquired over the I years. I appreciate it. Right? I try to my best to impart some. Yeah, nuggets. you have done that for me, bro. <laughs> Understand? <laughs> so I know for sure that my, you know, my my, my audience, they're gonna be a lot of nuggets that you're gonna get at the end of the day. But I wanna get to know something about you, right, Grand? What are two or three things that people may be surprised to hear and know about you? Um, I think one of the things that people might be surprised to know is one, people tend to see things that I'm always serious, mm. which I'm not. I'm like quite it, comical. It, 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 Matter of fact, at the workplace, I'm, I'm, I'll be the, the clown in the workplace. Mm -hmm. um, even though I'm very productive, yeah. I, I can be a nuisance in a relationship. I mean, I was at the problem, man. Every woman, go. they can't help but give problem. From grade, but grade you know, one looking for your face, we can't see it mischievous still. Well, mm -hmm. in certain regards. <laughs> 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 but otherwise, from that, yeah, so that's one thing. People like, I said it's there. Yeah, yeah. Um, the next thing is. I have no financial background as a financial advisor. Actually, it's just healthcare, mm. <laughs> right? Uh, so everything that I know as a financial advisor yeah. is either taught while going, uh, being on the job or, or self-taught. Mm. Right? So I have to do a whole lot of research to understand terminologies. So I'm constantly researching, constantly learning because uh, I know I have this great deficiency and you know, you can talk to persons, accountants and all those persons yeah. sometimes. And so they expect you to have a specific knowledge. So that's one. Mm. And the next thing is that, um, I was once engaged. I think that's one. <laughs> We're going to touch up. Yeah, so, if you're so, on the problem so, oh, still. No, no. There's a reason I that okay. still though, because that is very important. Right. I'm going to talk a little bit about mm -hmm. that and um, just how you know, it impacts the mental. Yeah, yeah. And how as men, oftentimes, we don't think it is important because you know, we just let go and then touch and go. Yeah. But it, 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 it is important. So we're going Extremely to talk about that as we progress. As we progress. Mm -hmm. No, me no want nobody. Just I said that. Mercy. Really, I'm not interested in nobody. This claim out there, time. ladies. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. Um, check me four months' time. If mm -hmm. people and daughter don't want me up. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, 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 man, we have your head on your body, so. Well, well. It shouldn't be hard. If, I'm, if a man may have your head on my body, then I wouldn't be a man. You wouldn't be a man. <laughs> he <you> bought it. <laughs> That's a good point to make this, bro. Indeed. Now, looking at the first part that you mentioned about people look at you. You know, and they think that you're serious and all of that. You know, trust me, when you reason with, with the bro, you know, you, you get a lot of, as I said earlier, a lot of wealth of knowledge, you know, and you laugh. 
Because he's a comical man, but at the same time, he's comical, a man. not funny. Not funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you have no difference, right? And so he knows how to have substantial conversations. I can tell you that from experience, right? But you mentioned, I want to touch on this part first. Mm -hmm. You mentioned that you were once engaged, yeah. right? Now, this is a conversation that many men they don't have. And for me, I want to touch on about things that people are afraid to talk about especially men many times we shy away from sharing our feelings or really go through uh -huh. how things affected us especially relationship wise right now i want to know for you were you always a man who saw marriage as something that you wanted i knew i wanted to be married mm -hmm. But I didn't know if I wanted the marriage, and it's it's a the first is coming from how I was grown and raised. Mm -hmm. The second part is coming from a matter of introspection and looking back. And a matter of fact, as recent as the last month or so, mm -hmm. you know, you know, you're supposed to have a wife, get married, which is the norm. Mm -hmm. But when you really understand what marriage is all about, you it really it really it really tells something more that you know there is something more yeah um and and so for me that was the case and by that i mean that art you know naturally if you had date somebody you know you're gonna marry the person the holders one we grew up in the adventist church mm. but for me i never really and i said it's hindsight um coming from the break up the whole works and even using the, the the engagement as an example i said to myself all right i knew i wanted to to be married but i wanted certain things in place first and the whole mm. works um but then my behavior wasn't consistent in being a husband mm, because you see the decision is not to be married the decision mm. is to be a husband yeah, yeah and yeah. there's a difference between deciding to be a man deciding to be a husband mm -hmm. and deciding to be a father correct a man every boy must choose to be a man mm -hmm. or else he forever re remain a, a male child mm -hmm. he forever re remain a male, male child. child and so what has really happened is that um back in july coming into august i decided to, I, said, I said something about something is not consistently right mm -hmm. with me because some things are just consistently wrong. Wow. i'm mm -hmm. meeting all these amazing women and i couldn't necessarily commit to one i couldn't bring out anything else and so i asked myself i said father god many if it's done my reason so i spent a really 40 days fasting and praying Mercy. not fasting and praying every day but mm. for, well not fasting every day but at least praying every day and okay we're bringing some of my friend them and say hey what man them this woman go asking for help me do because is either one of two things is either not going to bring me to an early grave by mm. making by me making foolish decisions yeah or when i go pray so me start make some right decisions so we can live out the full potential mm -hmm. and part of the thing the first first question that god presented to me was are you a man mm. and he said these are the ideals that a man hold mm -hmm. and i realized that as old as i am i've never really turned the things of childhood yeah you know paul says that when he becomes when he became, became a, man, a man, he put away childish, childish things. things. And so for myself, I, just, I realized that, ah, I have reached the age, I wanted manly things. You know, mm -hmm. I wanted a wife, I wanted, I wanted stability, I wanted all these things. But the boyish things, I still haven't put aside. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then now, back to answer the, the question as it relates to being, wanting marriage. Yeah. Then after that old idea, you know, God and I spent about, about a week just discovering who a man is. And not just who a man is, but the man that I was supposed to be. Mm -hmm. Because you look in society, everybody describes himself as a man. Yeah. And therefore, that's, that definition of how, who a man is, is no longer sufficient. You must become the man. Mm -hmm. It's similar to walking into a room of men, and every man look around to you and say, oh, see the man there? Yeah. And, and so it has to be that kind of import where in your life you become the man. Mm -hmm. Wherever you go, in your workplace, in your family, people recognize that you are the man. And it's not a case where you, you, you want to usurp the highest seat of authority. Mm -hmm. It's a case of where you recognize that wherever I go, I have, I have this God-given authority to act in this interest, in the interest of everyone else, because I am the, the man. man. Now, you mentioned something. You said that God showed you who a man is, mm -hmm. right? We all have different perspective of what a man is. What exactly did God show you? Oh, All right, so one of the first things that, that really happened was this. Um, 
I realized, I, 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 I started reading Genesis 1 in part, well, Genesis chapter 2. And I looked at, I looked at the overall thing in terms of just Adam. And you see, most man believes they become a man when they get a youth. Mm. Wrong. Most man believes they become a man when they get a wife. Yeah, and yeah. having a woman by your side makes you a man. But absolutely not. Mm -hmm. You look at Adam, and Adam was created as the man mm -hmm. right and the first thing that god did for adam was to present himself to adam yeah and so one of the first criteria to being a man is to have god or rather being the man i want to be very specific with that mm -hmm. is to have god at the head of your life, life. Mm -hmm. like your your first devotion is to god it isn't to your career it isn't to your wife it is to god, god. and so you have many a man in the world mm -hmm. because at the end of their ideals is themselves mm -hmm. and not necessarily God yeah. as in you're not taking directives from God and God say GK if you are going to be the man you have to have me as a center as in like you have to have me as your mental point of origin mm -hmm. like everything that you do from here going forward has to be based upon the fact that you are making decisions these decisions based upon the relationship between you and I yes the next thing he said that he said he said he said all right GK must said God said GK all right the next thing is that you have to ask yourself what is the mission that I gave you? Mm -hmm. And are you about that mission? Yeah. Because I think I know personally what my mission is. Mm -hmm. Because literally, I can tell you that God literally tell me point blank. Just like how me and yourself talk. Yeah. said, GK, this is where me want you to do. It's true. And it came with signs and wonders. And so I looked at it and I said to myself, said, ah, that's the problem. So I've not only rejected God as my head, or rather, even though I'm a Christian, I haven't had God at the head of my life, mm -hmm. nor was I about my mission. Mm. Mm. So now that explains why you realize that you were making some different, different mistakes and ah. your relationship yes. before weren't mm -hmm. working. Because I'm choosing people that couldn't necessarily go along with the mission. Because one of the key things that keep happening in them uh, is see. that you keep the Bible said grow up a child the way that you grow. If you grow up according to travel mission, one day they you see, God don't waste time telling us what to do, you know. Mm. If you know, we're not going to do it. Yeah. Sometimes it does that in the general things. But when it comes with something specific, it knows that you are going to do it. And if it keeps training the sign and say, all right, GK, now is the time to do this thing. Then you know, say, oh, you just know, say, you're going to do it. And if you don't have the right people around you, you're going to probably like Samson. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. um, and it's not to say that the women that I chose were bad women. Yeah. It's just that me should have more sense for you, I say, oh, I had a part of the mission and I should have chosen someone because it's a great injustice for me as a man mm -hmm. to choose to be with a woman mm -hmm. that I know cannot run the race that I'm supposed to run. Yeah. Just because I like her, if I really loved her, mm -hmm. then I wouldn't have put her into this cup, into this position where she's unable to, to, to live and be herself. So that was one. Mm -hmm. The other thing in terms of that was just the whole aspect of a man in terms of, you know, like, I could I, I had I had women as a very important part of my success story. Like I couldn't like you know, there's they've said that behind every successful man is a good woman. Mm -hmm. And so like mm -hmm. I was placing too much emphasis on the women in my life mm -hmm. to actually be a, a catalyst of my success. Mm -hmm. But you look back at Adam, the woman was given to Adam after his success. Because mm -hmm. Adam had a mission, he had a work. Mm -hmm. and he had a home yeah so adam was more set financially and had the capacity to take care of eve mm -hmm. before eve came along and i and in part of my discovery i revisited um one of one of my favorite preachers well not necessarily favorite preachers but a man that spoke for dr miles monroe mm -hmm. the late dr miles monroe and oh, you know cool. he, he spoke about some of these things and i, and I assessed and i realized that for myself say oh, this is so true mm -hmm. and my failure to follow this god-given pattern as the man mm -hmm. is going to ensure that the woman that i'm with because you, as a man you don't want you don't want any any woman, woman. out there because there's a lot of women out there but you want the woman who is for you correct and so without these things then minister continue to destroy the whole works and mm -hmm. then no once you have become a man because the natural progression is you must first choose to become a man and have the capacity to take care of a woman before you decide to be a husband. Mm -hmm. Because when you decide to be a husband, you're deciding to be more than just a regular man. Yeah. Because the Bible says, a man who is unmarried, in primary focus is who? God. God. But a man who 
married wife. in primary focus is woman. Mm -hmm. And we can't know why because women take a whole heap of time. Because women, women, women are, women are, we so deal with the woman. There. Complex that's in so, different that's, ways. That's, we talk about women and another yeah, segment. There are probably ten segments. I would yeah. say we don't complete a lot. Exactly. And I just say that women are, are complex and difficult, but God designed women in such a, a particular way that they were supposed to bring out particular things in men. Yeah. And so if you are as a man you now set and sure, then you're gonna end up destroying yourself mm -hmm. and the woman that you are with. And mm -hmm. that is why society is in the state that it is in. Yes, yes. Y y you know, you said something earlier. You mentioned that you never knew well the choice that you made in choosing these women right didn't fit with your purpose or your mission but you realize that you say they never knew initially they never knew exactly the man that you were supposed to be you weren't that man so it contributed as well as to the choices that you made so because you were not so aligned with your purpose, your mission, mm -hmm. you'd have made those decisions with choosing those women at the time. Yeah. So it coincides as well with why those women were a part of their life at the time. Because you never knew the man that you were supposed to be I at guess that time. That, yeah. So that's what I would have gotten from it. So both of them works together, you know. So I realize that sometimes the decisions that we make as men, it comes from that place where we don't fully understand what the God-given purpose is for us. And it was just recently, you know, um, Dr. Ellis was saying that men really and truly know their God-given purpose between the age 40 and 45, you know, and I believe that's from his research. But for you, right, coming back to the marriage, right, because you would have pretty much gotten to that place where you were engaged. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned initially that yes, you know, marriage was really something that you saw, you know, as what you want. But it within itself you would have failed to have reached to, you know. Now, what were some of the things that for you you realized would have led up to not reaching to the marriage? All right. Um. So there's, there's, as I said, there's, there's something unique about mm -hmm. men. And, and, and being a husband and being a husband it's is recognizing first and foremost that you are to this woman as Christ is to the church mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it's recognizing your role as a husband and I said it and I said one of, so one of the challenges that I had was I, so I just put in how to be a godly husband mm. in YouTube yes thinking I would find a ton load of information mm -hmm. And what I would find out of some short segments and one or two podcasts pertaining to that. Yes. In the midst of that, it's always it's all, all about how to be a godly wife. Mm -mm. And I recognize that, oh my gosh. Yeah. There's so much emphasis on women being wives. Mm -hmm. And little emphasis on men being husbands. Husbands. Because we assume that once you're a man, it is sufficient for you to be a husband. And that is not the fact. Yeah, yeah. And so we have an entire church full filled with wives. Mm. But we have men, but... They are not husbands. Mercy. Because we take it for granted that because you're a man, you're fit to become, a father, become a father, and you're and fit to become a husband. Mm. Which is not the case because all of those are conscious decisions. Yeah. Yeah. Because here's the first thing. Here's the first thing. It's not about how good she looks. Mm. It's about how much she takes care of you. Mm -hmm. The first thing about being a husband is, am I willing to lay down my life for this woman? That's the first line, you know. Granville, come here for preach, share. And so, let me tell you, uh, <laughs> all of these things are in hindsight, you know. Yes. Because I mean, these are coming from conversation with God. Mm -hmm. And he says, Granville, look at all the women there. Were you willing to lay down your life for all of those women that you have dated? Mm. And I'm like, um, no. And therefore, I could not be a husband to not these women, all. even if I had gotten married to them. Yes. Hmm. Hmm. Because as a spiritual man, I realized that there were certain things that were still off. Yes, yes. And, and so that's why it goes back to when God is a center, your mental point of origin, mm -hmm. and you want to do things according to God, you're going to choose a woman that, that, that is of your father. You're going to choose your sister, you know, one that, one, one that is from your kindred. Yeah. Because that person is going to help you. That person you can lay down your life for because that person will recognize Christ in your sacrifice. Mm -hmm. And so your life will not be wasted. You can't imagine you laying down your life for a harder. Mercy. Mm. 
Right. And if you find yourself in a position where you're questioning if you're not willing to leave, if you, if you should die today, your biggest fear is who should go and marry after mm. you. You're not ready yet. Yeah, yeah. Because you don't understand fully that when you're dead, your time just done. Yeah, that's it. And that everything you own, if you have a problem leaving everything that you own, to this woman that you have an interest with, every single thing, your child, your wealth, your finances, everything. And that's not the, it's not that that's not the woman for you, you're not the woman for this man, that you're not, not the man for this for woman. Mm -hmm. Because you haven't seen her as how Christ has seen the church. And so being a husband is just, it's, as I said, it's just a decision. I think that was the first and foremost thing. Like, I didn't recognize that it is my duty to really lay down my life for this person. Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, provide things. Not, I mean, literally, if push comes to shove tomorrow morning and the only way for this woman to live is for me to literally just give up my head. life. That means that. Mm -hmm. Whether I be take out my heart, my kidney, or whatever interest that this person live, what is that? Yeah. She's not your responsibility. That is not bone of your bone. If she mm -hmm. die, you die. Yeah. So you weren't willing to sacrifice your yeah. life for her. Yeah. And so you realize that that's one of the reasons why the marriage thing never no went. Problem. Yeah. And it showed, it showed, it showed, it showed in, in simpler ways, like, you know, still entertaining other, 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 other feminine. Mm -hmm. Um, still, um, mm -hmm having certain conversations, still prioritizing work over her well-being, that kind of mm. situation. Um, and so, yeah, you, you, you live and you learn. Yeah. But I'm going to say that is, that is, that is, that is, that is tier, tier three, mm -hmm. tier two in being a tier man. Two. Okay. So level one is a decision to be, to be a man and that is the foundation of everything. But to be a husband, then it takes a more conscious decision. It does. But then I had no right intermeddling in a husband affairs because I had not yet chosen to be a man. Correct. And, I, and, and, and as a man, I did not have the necessary fulcrum and the discipline and the things in place that a man should have in place before he invites a woman into mm -hmm. his space. And that's important, which we're going to touch on yeah. in the latter part, you know, the finances and the other various things that we as men we believe that we put as importance that we have to have before we take on a woman right but also in life you know we have to have these things in order for us to be successful but you know this whole failure of that relationship which should have gone close to being married right how has it affected you, you know mental health is very important and you know for us men we shy away from sharing our feelings sometimes we will sit down and we'll be going through a tough time and until a bridging city will grow you know look like yourself that's when we get up and we say boy bro you know say this happen and we feel this side this type of way you know and this is what take a toll upon me right how did that mentally affect you knowing that it never worked out and you were looking forward to it at first and foremost, I thought I was fine. I, I still remember the first day. Uh, I thought it was good. And then after it ended, I was like, ah, you know what? Finally, maybe just go out there, go wheel and do the works, you know? Mercy. <laughs> do the works of the enemy. Do the works? <laughs> All right, come and just say, I get clear to it, you know? Uh, <laughs> do the works of the enemy. And, and so, um, I just became carefree mm -mm. and the whole works. Um, what I didn't know, what I didn't know was that, I see as something, something has been, because we're so caught up in the day-to-day -day activities that, we ignore what is happening and, and what was really happening was that little by little mm -hmm. this thing was chipping out chipping away chipping away chipping away chipping away chipping away and I made some poor poor decisions, financial decisions mm -hmm. um and then it's it's hindsight again yeah that i realized that something was off and one of the key things that so i'm in kingston um where i originally lived then we moved from there so we moved got uptown and then i was like in uptown for like two months and then, you know, I went, I went on a cruise um, by myself for 10 days. Mm -hmm. I would come back and say, you know, I just don't want to be there in Kingston. Mm. Because everywhere that I went to, I would just see the person mentally. Oh. And I said, you know what, um, that's my realtor posted that place. I said, yo, which part that there? She said, out of town, inside. I said, all right, you know what, I want it. Yeah. You see, I'm just rock out and... So I was at Linstead for a year. Mm -hmm. Was well, six months into the year, I guess one of the key things is the slow pace the environment of rural Jamaica. Mm -hmm. um, and then the drive home, drives home are much longer. Yeah. And so, you know, driving is therapeutic. Yeah, yes. So eventually, the mind starts to slow down. 
and not having any distractions because one, I never left from Linz to go see anybody and nobody left from Linz to come see me. Yeah. Um, so I didn't have that kind of, even talk about friends and family and the whole thing. So I was, I was a stranger in Linz. Mm -hmm. And one of the key things that happened is, I'm going to start tying myself so because now the brain have time to think, think and assess. There's, there are no distractions. Um, my slow down where work was concerned and the whole rest. And then I was like, what is happening? Mm. And that's when I realized that. I, I woke up one day and I realized that, oh my God. I was backtracked when things started falling apart and I realized that's, that's when the engagement was actually called off. Mm. And I said, I said, I can't believe this. Mm. Because I tell you, you know, like, I shouldn't necessarily be a single man now, mm -hmm. right? I should be a married man now because yep. I tell you, I've made some, I've met some really great women over the last three years. Mm -hmm. um, when I say I've met pure wives, mm -hmm. pure women who will lay down their lives for me, wow. and I couldn't commit. Mm -hmm. I couldn't figure it out anywhere. So, oh my gosh, mm -hmm. this is it. I need to fix it. I need to get some closure here, and um, it, it situation it impacted me from a financial perspective. Mm -hmm. Right, it impacted me from a career perspective mm. because I was a shell. I became a shell of who I was. Yeah. And it, it, there's a there's a thing where I don't think we, I don't question my value as a man, but I question my purpose as a man. And as a man, I tell you, the purpose purpose is a fuel. Just mm. like how love is a fuel for women in a relationship. Purpose as a man is is is, is, yeah, is, is a fuel good. in your life. Mm. Right. And so. When I recognized that that was old, it started to plot in, in my life yeah. at work. Mm -hmm. And so in my work, I was just, I couldn't, I didn't have no interest in that work. I'm doing enough, you know, to still be one of the top performing advisors in the company and the whole works, but mm -hmm. that is nowhere near my capacity. Yeah. It's like you're being called to be the best and you're just being mediocre. part of the best, just the same, mm -hmm. right? I understand my mediocre is way above average for, 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 the, for the regular person, but at the same mm -hmm. time, we don't, we don't compare ourselves based upon where others are, how to compare ourselves based upon where we know God has called us to be. Right. And that is the important thing. And, and so work was falling apart. I questioned myself, like, what was I doing? What was I doing? I knew God has placed me in this career for a particular reason, to meet persons, not only to shape your finances, but to shape your lives. Yeah. Because selling them insurance and investment is one thing. Mm -hmm. The other part of it is a conversation we have on, like, where are you going? Even since we had a client, a conversation with a client, I said, where are you going? Mm -hmm. so, I lost myself a couple years ago when to realize that. And, and I'm like, and I'm asking her the question, I realized that, uh, that she lost her goals and identity when her father passed. Mm. And I realized that, no, we have some work for her. And the major work that I have to do was not to sell this young lady some insurance and investment. Mm -hmm. It was once again for her to believe in the things that she wanted to do. Right. And so I was unable to even do that fully as a financial advisor because I said, this is a mission. I was now doubting the job and the career that God has placed in my life. Mm -hmm. Not only to earn millions, but to help others earn millions. I'm mean, like, something the right. And it's like now dealing with the whole relationship aspect and coming around that I realized that, ah, that's the problem. Mm -hmm. And so one of the key problems was that in the relationship, and as I said, it is important for men to ensure that at the center of your life, before you do anything else, God, it is God. Straight. And so there's something called your mental point of origin. Mm -hmm. And your mental point of origin is a point from which all your decisions flows and the reason for your life and your existence. That is the reason from which you, 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 you have this drive to create success. Yeah. And what I didn't know was that my desire to make this woman happy was that she became my mental point of origin. Mm. And so, even though I did not know it, even though I wasn't necessarily being the best man to her, mm -hmm. she was a great factor in terms of me wanting to do great things and yes. to achieve great things. Because yes. I think part of us as men is that regardless, regardless of whatever is happening, the woman that we are with, we want the best for them. Correct. And if you don't have God, the next best thing in your life is really a woman oh, because man. you want to ensure so your, your, your person and your life is set. Mm -hmm. And so you go out there pursuing this mission, pursuing this mission. And so without that, without a woman, and without that firm holding on God that I needed to mm -hmm. make my decision as a financial advisor, so that's what they're not doing. Everything way. just crumbled on. And the same, I related, really related to my family, we mm -hmm. are related to my friends. Everything was just chaotic. Mm -hmm. And I depended, and I said, I placed too much importance and too much pressure and the woman to actually bring forward forth my success mm -hmm. and can't do that and i think a lot of men uh we place too much emphasis on the women that we are with to actually bring forth our success i want to make it simply the woman has a role to play in our success 
Yes? That's true. But she doesn't have a role to play in our success because we should be a success before we meet her. Mm. We like we, we play too much emphasis on the struggle part of, of, of relationship and believe that you know must go through the rough patch with that woman before you know she's able to fully um support me and the whole works. And truth be told, some of us go through some rough patch and we just stuck in the rough patch for nine, forty years and mm. the life of the woman is no better. Yeah. God gave and go back to the original. God Adam was complete in his work. I say if you find like a girlfriend from any poor days, mm -hmm. um, you know, if you continue with her and she wants to stick by her, the whole works. But make sure that God is a mental point of yeah. origin mm -hmm. and you're focusing on that. Yeah. And so it took some time, it took some decisions to actually to get that right. Like when I when when I did that and I said to myself, cause I realized that part of the thing was that I didn't really let this girl go after all these years. Mm -hmm. And I thought that I did, mm -hmm. but of course I didn't. Um, and so it, was, it wasn't at the point where um, I made a decision that, you know what, all right, God, it is not the man who follows the woman, it is the woman who follows the man. Yep. And so I say, you know what, God, this is it. Um, and then from that decision, flow the decision now as to what I was going to do with my mission. Mm -hmm. And I found that now I find myself right back on my mission. Yeah. And so now, one of the key things that has happened is that the big difference between GK now and GK from three years ago mm -hmm. is that it's the same person, it's just that the outlook is different. And I tell you, what, it's just one key thing. I am going to be successful, not because of a woman. Yes. I want to be successful so that the woman that I get in my life, I'm able to sustain them. Correct. It's one hell of a thing when you, you don't have the capacity to actually take care of a woman mm -hmm. and you have a woman in your space. Mm -hmm. It makes your life a hundred times as hard because sure. you have to, here every day, you have to be looking at what you cannot yet do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you have things that you have to do. Yeah. And if you do those things, you're going to take time away from her. Yeah. And she, at the same time, she needs the emotional support. Mm -hmm. and, and it's just, it's like the more you work on where you work on, it's the harder her life becomes. Yeah, yeah. True. That's not true. I've right? experienced it before. And so it's just, it's just, it's just part. And I, and I realized that it's the same for many men. Mm -hmm. Even last night, you know, I was up talking to a, a bridging. I'm saying, GK, I'm just go through it. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just I just want to send him a wife. Mm -mm. I just want to send her away. Make sure she go over there, so take a break. But I dare so I just, me just build up by myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. From which part me there. Mm -hmm. And it's not so much that it's, it's a selfish, selfish. thing. Mm -hmm. It's like, remember, originally, men go, went to war. Mm -hmm. We went to war. Yeah. There were no families, no children. They existed only in our mind and, and, and the future that we were fighting for. Mm -hmm. And so I think. Part of that still exists within us today where we know it is that we are going to war. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm not talking about God, we are accommodate other women and the whole. You know, we're not talking about yeah, that yeah, nonsense. Yeah, yeah. We're talking about going to war seriously for our goals and objectives. Mm -hmm. We really don't want the persons around us to be to be there because war is brutal. Yes, yes. War is brutal, you know. Mm -hmm. And it's going to have brutal impacts. They're going to come in someday from work and the scar is going to be there. Mm -hmm. Well, You're going to still be in a temper based upon the things that never work out the day. Mm -hmm. And really and truly, you don't want to expose your family to that yeah. because they're going to see it as that they don't love me yep um babes don't love me and that mm -hmm. kind of situation why 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 are you dealing with me thus yeah yeah at war mm -hmm. and so it is important for men to go at war first mm. and so god can provide the necessary things and if you go through scripture it is all of that and so part of dealing with that mental health i did go yes. to some counseling on the whole works mm -hmm. um but i also surrounded myself with men good not women, mm -hmm. but with men mm -hmm. who could understand what it is that I'm going through, where that I'm going through. But not any men, but, but, but men who are actually going are in places where I was going to be. Yeah. So I thought that it was a relationship issue mm -hmm. that I was having. Mm -hmm. And therefore, I put together first Christian men mm -hmm. because we share the same values. Yeah. But men who I knew valued their wives. Not just any man who was married. But men who value their wives and love and church their wives and I sat myself in their council and even though somewhere of my own age group, I learned from them. Yes. And I was like, ah, mm -hmm. holy, holy, holy moly. Mm. And I said, all right, you know what? That's that. So the one advantage that I have over them is that I am still single and I can still pursue my mission. Yes. Because for a few, you know, that little mission was interrupted. Mm -hmm. But for yeah. me, yeah. I now get to pursue that and then add whosoever I want That's right. thereafter. And one thing I can tell you, yes. uh, there, there are seven good women to every one good man. 
I'm not saying that you should give up on the good man that is currently in your life. Mm. But if pursuing what God has given you is going to cause you to lose out on certain relationships, you don't have to worry. When you become a man of value, as the world now puts it, mm. you, you're going to find yourself um, in the same... You're going to find yourself with access. Mm. As a man of low value now, as I would describe myself based upon my own measurement of my own success, mm -hmm. I can have I have way too much access. Yeah, I have way too much access to men. Mm -hmm. And you think and you think that that is something that is commendable and many men say yeah 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 yeah. But you can't have sex so mm -hmm. much and no more. Yep. I mean, tell you, after a while, sex mm -hmm. going to have literally no value. No value at all. With your bank account the way it's supposed today, mm -hmm. you, you can't even function. Mm -hmm. You're mentally you know the Yeah. Mm -hmm. You personally don't beside you and you are weak because. One thing you want to know is just get up on the work from where you're supposed to work on. And so that's just it. Yeah. Boy, you really cover what I wanted to find out because I wanted to find out how did you get help or seek help to get over this mental health issue. You know, because you touched that it affected you financially, you know, of course emotionally, career wise. And so it shows that when we have issues like breakups one of issues where individuals that we put as high importance in our lives it can really affect all the different areas of our lives yeah right and so that was very important for you to show us especially as men some of the things that you had to do you had to do the self-introspection you know because that's where it really starts if you yourself don't take the time out to say hey where did i go wrong what do i need to work on <clears throat> then you will not know where deficiencies are so that you can be able to build those and or eliminate those and have the strengths you know so i really hope that many you are listening and you'd have gotten how you can be and it can work for him that way it can work a different way for you but it's very important to get that first stop at where did i go wrong what do i need to change and work on right now you would have pretty much shared initially mm -hmm. that Finances, right? Of course, it's something that you really never had much knowledge of, and so you had to put yourself around yeah. people and read and all these things, you know. But I think also that you would have mentioned the medical aspect of things. You were more in of a, a pharmacist, yes, pharmacist, pharmacist, right? So you're a trained pharmacist. So if you grew up and that was the era that you were in, I want to find out how you move from the pharmacist to finances and financial advisor you All know right. that that's something i'm very curious about i think you see you see, you see god is in the process god is in the business of trading people you know um so pretty much being a financial advisor is primary sales but as i've I, as i as i have known and i can say clearly to people today i'm not called to be a traditional financial advisor I'm called to be a financial advisor in the sense of what you consider a financial advisor to be. Mm -hmm. um, to the point where the level of importance that I will have in your life is, is as important as your doctor is to your health, mm -hmm. as your lawyer is to your legal affairs. Yeah. That's how, that's, in a couple of years' time, that's the level of importance that I'm going to have to my clients in mm -hmm. terms of their financial affairs. Like, they will make no large financial decision without first consulting me. But how I got to that point, how I'm, how I'm going to get to that point, is first based upon my history. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's pretty much as if God was just training me in every single era of life, in every single discipline. Being a financial advisor, it requires of me to go out there and to speak to people. Mm -hmm. um, one of the first things that I ever did was actually preach in church. Mm -hmm. But then I also did speech and drama from grade 7 all up until we until 6th form. And so that would have given me the ability to to not only to speak, but to also to act in a particular kind of way and to have the various ability to deliver certain yes. messages and to understand where people are coming from. So that was that. And then through different areas of leadership from, from prefect all the way up to college in position of leadership, my involvement in, in, in my friends who are with my friends who are in politics and every single thing. So when I came to, to, to Sajikor, mm -hmm. it's like all the skills, all the talents, everything, I realized that, whoa, yeah, this career was... required all of that. Mm -hmm. And a matter of fact, this client, this career was calling forth all of that that was within me. Nice. And I was like, 
Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No. Mm-hmm. Take even for example, you know, remember that the only reason we're having this conversation, mm-hmm. talking to people about everything as except money, is because of me being a financial advisor. Advisor, correct. correct. Now, if if I was just a regular financial advisor and I had not all those trainings mm-hmm. and I wasn't grown in the school of Christ, that's how I put it. Yeah. Then would be able to do this. Yeah. And so God was just doing everything, and part of my thing was that I was always make praying. Asking God what to do. We are currently here at Hope Guard. Mm-hmm. I remember when I was in college and part of the decision was should I go into student leadership or should I go um, overseas to work and travel and make some money? Yeah. And I spent one entire day here at Hope Guard fasting and prayed. Right, and I said, God, what do I do? Should I go for the money or should I go for the leadership? And at mm-hmm. the end of the day, um, me just, me said, God, I'm going to hear your voice. I'm going to show you one, but you're going to flip a kite. Yeah. It's a big thing, flip mm-hmm. a kite, because it's a 50 50. I said, You know what, God? Heads means leadership, tails mm-hmm. means uh, we are going for the money, and I flip that kite. And it dropped. As a matter of fact, I found the kind over here. Mm-hmm. And I flipped that kind. It dropped my head. I'm not going to start to pick it up. Straight, straight over some of the people drop off my application. I said, mm-hmm. That's it. And that one decision, which is also a combination of other smaller decisions, just yeah. lead up to that. Yeah. And so that's how I got there. When I got there, I realized that there is, there is much more to be done. There is more that people expect from a financial advisor in terms mm-hmm. of not just the Oh, you want some insurance, you want some investment, but mm-hmm. people wanted the guidance. Come on. And so I forgot training for that. Touch so I have to buy books, mm-hmm. I have to read books, I have to do courses, I have to do everything, I have to challenge everything when I have to challenge the norm about money and the whole world. Mm-hmm. And so I just find myself always doing more, always studying more. Um, much to the expense sometimes of, of decreasing my current income. Because mm-hmm. I have to say, no, if it's going to be a long term thing, pretty much I do one degree all over again, mm-hmm. but this time from the streets. Yeah. So that is that, and I try to use what we call principles of finances and wealth mm-hmm. as as part of a part of the rubric that I use to guide my clients. Mm-hmm. So that's how you make up for one deficiency. But even in pharmacy, enough itself, one of the key things that I, I can always say I take from pharmacy is one: as a scientist, we are we are, we are taught how to be critical thinkers. Yes. But as a pharmacist, more than anything else, we are taught something that is called patient care, and that every single client as an individual need mm-hmm. as a person so you have a hundred persons on who, who, are, who are diabetic or hypertensive yeah they may all be on the same drug mm-hmm. but they're not all on the same dosage mm-hmm. and they're not all on the same same dietary restrictions and they're not all on the same um, mm-hmm. um exercise program every single one they may have similar things yeah. but they're not all the same and so it's the same with people I have persons out there who are wealthy, persons out there who are financially stable, for the persons out there in financial challenges. Yes. But they all have different, they all require different programs. And it is from my duty as a financial advisor to go in and say, a bench well, just screech over a little bit or do this a little bit differently and the whole works to mm-hmm. ensure that success become, um, becomes theirs. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, I just want to find out one final thing, right? What were some of the challenges you faced? Because Many persons may think that, yeah, you know, you, you said all of these things, you went and you got the, the study over, so, and every different smaller stuff added up to where you are now in the financial advisor space. But I'm sure you had some challenges before you would have came there, or even whilst heading there, right? And that's what I am very much curious to know, because some people may say, boy, you know, you sound like you did grow up and you have money, or, <laughs> you know, you had it very well, you know, and... Some people would know it when you had a certain specific car and then see the drive and the difference to where you are now. You know, what were some of the challenges you had to go through in order for you to reach to where you are now? What? I tell you something. My father gave me one piece of advice and he says this. He said this. He said, when you get a woman in your life, I don't know if you go back in your past in your history. Mm-hmm. Just that the people who are running with us assume that this is the way it has always been. Mm. Right? But today I'm not going to necessarily look at that. Uh, because even sometimes I myself forget um, where I'm coming from. As a matter of fact, I went to do I went to be a guest speaker at a at an event last Sunday. And the gentleman he, I had spoken to you before, just like come and talk to you so you know something yep. about me when I go there on camera. That's right. And I'd forgotten that I had spoken to those things. Mm-hmm. And so instead of giving the traditional speech, the man started about where I come from. Yeah. Things that even I myself forget. But and that, while I'm there, mm-hmm. tears come and I come here and say, Jaja, brother, how you forget where you come from? Yeah. And it's a great it's a great disadvantage to us sometimes because sometimes we forget how far God has actually brought us from. Yeah, and so it impacts the present 
mm. and there's not much great appreciation for the present and we feel like we're in the worst situation of our life True. when truly and fact we are billions of, of, of distance years, light years away from where we were. That's true. And so even part of my initial struggle just being a financial advisor, um, I mean, about care, I mean, it's a work and sell insurance. Mm -hmm. um, I st there's still a poem that I wrote um, <laughs> because someday I'll go complete applications and then hope to call it the premium tomorrow. Yeah, mm -hmm. I forget this one time, um, me drive, me take bus, I used to live on Riddles Road, so me take bus from Riddles Road, go half a tree, yeah. go Spanish Town, Take a bus from Spanish Town, go all over. Right? See. You go sell insurance. Decision was do I take my lunch money, mm -hmm. buy a lunch, or do I use my lunch money for, for take, for me, take, for take, take, take transport for mm -hmm. city client? You would like to believe that it's a successful story because, you know, like after all that struggle, you must pay out the man buy it. Yeah. Say, no, and the man, man never buy insurance. Mm -hmm. see. So, can you just imagine? Devastated. No, devastated. If you take the last second money I have now, take bus come back at town. I just straight to my yard, I go. There were days, there were days. Because I'm not afraid to have. I'm not enough things in my life. And that's that's what I want, really. I'm not afraid enough things in my life. I never forget there's this one client I was supposed to see. Mm -hmm. um, I think now she would, live, she would be working on Hold Up Road, but I never have a car. Mm -hmm. And every time I go see this woman rainfall. Every time I go see this woman rainfall. I remember one day when I'm a great reader, I call it and say, yes, today is the day. Come on, shell them put on my calendar. Yeah. Boom rain start fall, but I'm watching rain fall, and I said it, and I saw the rain fall, I said the tears, I saw the tears in my room. And so, but just like just like Shuba said, it's like the beginning is never, never easy, and it's still not easy now because you work hard for for gain wealth. Yeah, if yeah, work twice yeah. as hard to keep it. To keep it. Mm -hmm. Because there are so many ways, and I tell you, mm -hmm. I've, I've earned millions and I've lost millions, and I'm currently in it because I would have lost a lot of momentum over the last three years. Yeah. I made some poor foolish decisions. Not necessarily poor foolish decisions, but they were made on my financial capacity then. Yes. But the one thing I can tell you, no matter how great you are, one thing you cannot you cannot calculate for is your mental health declining. Mm -hmm. And so when my mental health declined, everything around me suffered. Yes. And so I encourage many just to always ensure so you want to take care of on the mental health mm -hmm. and on the finances. Yes. And on the health. Yes. Not necessarily in that order, probably your health and your mental health and your finances. Mm -hmm. And everything else will take care from there. Um, but even in his career and of itself, um, I had to build a reputation because um, many persons were like, GK, I come from farmers where you know about money and the whole works. And mm. so even my own initial peers, I always say my peers, but the people from my farms because of the immediate people that I had, to, had sex to, they didn't necessarily, necessarily believe that I had the capacity. They knew that I could lead, but finances, GK, although we have the same background, how can you yes. lead me? It's mm -hmm. a case of Joseph, like Joseph, yeah. how can yeah. Joseph lead them? But, mm -hmm. um, as I said, I know exactly where I'm going, and, and so it took a while to actually get here where if someone is presented with GK the Trusted Advisor and another advisor, it is quite likely that they're going to choose GK the Trusted Advisor. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and the brand is here, it, it took years, it's still not where it's supposed to be. Um, I said for the last year or so, I've withdrawn from public life just trying to recuperate and to get things flowing again in the yeah. direction that was actually benefit the people mm -hmm. um, that I serve. But hopefully going into this next quarter by the will of God because it's not according to our will. That's true. It's by according to his will. Mm -hmm. um, I'll be able to bring those things. But it's never easy. And, and that's a challenge that we have as men and women. But I don't focus too much on women because I believe that it's our duty as men to get things right and the lives of the women will be a little bit different. Right. So when I speak to you men, I'm, I'm, I'm saying this to you that part of the challenge that we have is that we are in a rush to get to somewhere that we won't reach until we're in our 40s. Mm. And so if you slow down and decide, you know, instead of going to try to get this thing over two years, I'm going to get this thing over 10 years. Mm -hmm. It takes a while to build up reputation. And at the same time, remember that God is in the process of character building. Yes. God first wanted to have the character built. God could have delivered Joseph from being thrown into prison because of this woman. Mm -hmm. But I sure like to believe that Joseph still had some pride in him. And so God said, all right, we could have provided a witness. Yeah. We're not because you know, so Joseph never really do whatever, mm. but they were no witness. You think yeah. I don't know him, I do because God knows him need to go back in the, in, in, in the prison, yeah, the prison. To go and root some other things all time, all time. Like, because mm. we, we, we how them preach about these Bible characters, they preach about these Bible characters. I see it, yeah, bro. Come on, man. All right, so it's on for you. Say, sure, mm. sure, mm -hmm. Joseph, me not saying no, but he's a, he's a plain man. Joseph may not have slept with Potter's wife, but we know right. him so never. But we're going to, we're going to leave that alone. <laughs> the Bible is silent at that, but we're silent yeah. at that, but we're not going to touch that. Straight. But we don't know what else 
in you know, a Joseph heart, yeah. we think Joseph was his perfect just like we know David never perfect. Okay. Jonathan, no, there's only somebody perfect in the Bible, uh, are we in? And every now and again, the Bible gives us glimpses into how wicked these men were. Yep. Right? So the Bible mm -hmm. said Joseph was a nice boy, and that's why Jesus ended up sending back a, 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 a jail. Mm -hmm. If you go remove some of the things and learn some more humility, because Joseph was very cocky. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes, you know, our destiny to where we are going. Gotta go bring us eyes and loose because the washing machine is a cycle and it not tap rinse us until we get to the character point. Yes. And so it is very important for us to have that mental point of origin to watch the hand of God. Because one of the key things I never tell you, mm -hmm. right through the last two years, I upon I upon I upon financial welfare by God. You know? mm -hmm. Talk to me more about that, man. Let me tell you something, like I earn hundreds of thousands mm -hmm. per month. Yeah. Right? And me I said to myself, say yo, um, there are times when no matter how hard, we just can't close a sale. Yeah. I'm just having enough money if you buy enough groceries for last the next month, enough to pay my bills. I'm mean, like, God, this is not my life. No, not at all. And occasionally we send uh, someone to come give me a strength and the whole But I said, this is not my life. Yeah. But I said, no matter how hard, I try and God say, all right, bro, my remind me of something. And your skills and your talents to this. Mm -hmm. I still me give you the capacity mm -hmm. to earn well. Mm -hmm. Right? And so, if I bring it through a certain stage, I'm going to bring it through a certain stage. And let him say, at time for you left instead. Mm -hmm. At time for you come back at all. Yeah. I come back at all and the ball game is a little bit different now. And I find myself building up the necessary momentum and the whole works. And, and so I make decisions that are in line with his decisions. Mm -hmm. <coughs> things start to flow. Yeah. You know, things just start to flow and people start to find me. And there's a, there's a, the, one of the Bible verses that I use during this season is Ezekiel uh, 36 verse 11. And it says, I will multiply man and beast upon you. Mm -hmm. um, and I will make your latter end greater than at the beginning. Yes. Not for your sake, GK, mm -hmm. but for my sake. For so when sake. you see it, like I, you should go and read your entire Ezekiel 36 from verse 7 to end it. Okay. And him say, may I go do this for now? Well, because he's a wicked looking fool. Because <laughs> 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 it's the same place because he's yeah, wicked. That's what and means. your heart not set straight. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do this because me can't wait for you to get to where you go. Mm -hmm. If you do all this, so me can actually save some other people. Yeah. But when me do this, it's going to break your heart. Mm -hmm. And you're going to say, how could I have done these things to my God? Yeah, I see. That's him saying. Mm -hmm. And so me just use that phrase, say, you know, at the end of the day, the cattle upon the toes and hills are his. Mm -hmm. He sends the people. So even you coming here now, having a conversation with me, yes. this, is, this is just you being part of God's plan in terms of just ensuring that I get out there and get not my message out. That is right. But to get his, his. message out. And I want to just want someone to view this and get the right message. That's one. Bro, that is my mantra. Impacting lives one day at a time. One. Just one person. Right? And some persons may look and they may say, yo, you know, you have a channel and everybody else have a channel. What's your uniqueness about your channel? Everybody else have one, say one, have one. But for me, I love to hear stories. I love to gain knowledge from other persons. And I love to share also my knowledge that I've acquired with people. You know, so sit down discussions like this is really something that brings me joy. And I just want to find one person out there that he can connect to when I have my guests. I'm going to give you a, I'm going to give you a Bible verse. Mm -hmm. It says, despise on the day of small beginnings. It's a Bible verse. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think I think it was talking about as I don't remember the exact where it come from. I don't remember if it's Zachariah, but it talk about says Zeru, and Zerubbabel saw the measuring line in the angel's hand, and the word from the angel was that despise on the day of small beginnings, as in like it says despise on the day of small beginnings because the Lord rejoices to see the word begins. Yeah, right. And what it is saying is that don't worry about the smallness of the thing. Mm. It might look like it at the calf now, but you have to remember now. It's just about how it goes. You don't know how long it's going to take it. It's time in the industry time. that, that, that changes things. Mm -hmm. yeah, time bro. in the industry that changes things. You know? um, one of the top, prop, top advisors in the world, he spent eight years as what you would call a bottom feeder in the industry. Mm -hmm. Eight years. Mm -hmm. just a, that's why a regular advisor, mm -hmm. below average. No matter how hard him try, him could have succeed. Eight years. Then the ninth year, the man finally make what we'll call in the in the company million dollar round table, which is mm -hmm. first status level. Yeah. So the following year, the man went to the top of the table. So let me explain to you. So MDRT is a measure of numbers, mm -hmm. the amount of sales and people lives have changed pretty much. Okay. If you make MDRT is one thing. Mm -hmm. 
make te- top of the table is six times MDRT. Wow. The man was the number one financial advisor in the world. In, in his 10th year. 10th year this guy. And the man remained at the top of the industry for another 10 or 12 years. Look at that. Because what? You see, the building from the 80 years, you know. The foundation. Foundation. And that's why you talk about the whole beginning. The beginning, bro. The beginning. The beginning. So it shows that even for you, your beginning, it never really started out smooth and rough. But God transitioned your life in such a way where you had the highs and your lows. But you are here today where you can be able to say these are the different nuggets, these are the lessons yeah. I learned. Who, at the end of the day, I am not a perfect person, but I am better than where I was. You know? And so, trust me, bro, this conversation, we could have had it a long because we don't want to touch on some more things, you know. Ooh, I mean, <laughs> we'll be back. We will we'll 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 be, be back. We we'll have to be back. We'll have to be back. <laughs> 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 we have to. Because while I'm here, there are so many questions where they just a channel through my brain, but we cannot take it on. We cannot take it in this video, right? But whatever it is that you would have learned, right? I really trust that men specifically, you know, you would have looked into what GK would have mentioned, got something from it, right? We really want to see our men, including myself, you know, elevate to a better standard and will be the man, right? Rather than just a man. So we want to be able to prepare ourselves to be that priest, provider, protector so that when God says, hey, listen, you're Eve, I want to add her to your life. We'll not have her being a dis- or we'll not destroy her, but instead we'll be able to blossom and flourish together. Yeah, you know? So I just want to say thank you so much for tuning in. You know, if it is that this was very fruitful, leave a comment. You know, leave one of the nuggets that GK left for you. Gentlemen, I know you most times will not do it, but I want you to leave something that you learned from this. And ladies, if there's a question that you have or anything that you have, you can leave it in the comments so that we can tackle it on the next discussion. All right, but GK, my bro. You know the thing, though? I love it. <laughs> 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 Always. Yeah, what respect, fam. In every aspect, my brother. You know, so this is a place where you come to stay, where lives are being impacted and changed every day. It's wealthy royalty. Thank you so much for tuning in. See you next time.